Good evening, church. Welcome to Sunday evening Bethany service. We, as we celebrate Father's Day this evening, let's appreciate our earthly fathers, our spiritual fathers, and our heavenly Father. They have been faithful. They have blessed us. They have been with us. So let's let's celebrate them. Let's appreciate them as we praise His name this evening. Every blessing you pour out, Lord, turn back to pray. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say every blessing. Every blessing you pour out, Lord, turn back to pray. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Even the suffering, you bless your name. Even in black, we bless your name, God. Oh, even in darkness, we bless your name. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Oh. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your glorious name. Oh, Jesus. Bless your name. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name. Praises to your name. Praises to your holy name. Yes, Jesus. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord. Praises to your name. Oh, Lord. For your name.
Amen. Once again, a blessed, blessed evening to all of you. What a fantastic week we are having in the presence of the Lord. So many conversations taking place, such a lot of interaction taking place within the Bethany family. And very specially, this thank you is to our Revive group. Revive, amazing job. You've been praying for the entire week, upholding the entire ministry. I want to say thank you. Uh, this evening, 4 o'clock, I had a call with them. Man, I'll tell you what. Uh, uh, just, I'm blessed. We are blessed to have such wonderful young people waking up in the morning and praying. Let me give you a heads up how this service is going to end. Even as today is Father's Day, at the end of the service, we are going to have a special little clip from our kids so fathers very specially make sure that you hang in okay very important the kids have something special for every one of us once again a blessed evening i want to minister on a subject called lockdown but not knock down lockdown but not Knock down. I want you just to hear this word. 
lockdown everybody is in lockdown but are you knocked down see lockdown is beyond your control but knockdown is within your control i believe without a shadow of doubt we the people of god we cannot be knocked down let me tell you a story there was a man called noah he was locked down for 40 days and 40 nights but guess what he was not knocked down you know why he had a relationship with god he had a purpose for living he had faith in god he obeyed the lord so locked down but not knocked down this is the absolute truth and my dear bethany family who is listening to me and everybody else who tunes in to listen i've had a few complaints from people who say why does pastor d always say that he speak into the bethany family and those who are not a part of the family they feel like left out i want to say you know i don't do it with that intention but bethany is our family and i love these people so i call them my family in that sort of a sense so so sorry if any of you get offended by it okay but here is it listen to me tonight again locked down but not knocked down and i'm going to teach a little bit tonight how do you stay without being knocked down and what if i have to say the secret is in knowing god the secret is in prayer the secret is in praying in faith will cause you not to be knocked down in life so i want to emphasize a little bit about prayer tonight i'm going to start off by saying something like this prayer is an invitation from god to man take note of it prayer is an invitation from god to man it's an invitation beloved friends God is inviting you to come on let's have a conversation. What a fantastic truth this is. I hope you are excited about it. I always would begin to think about it. What if a very famous person gives you their personal number and say text me, call me. You will be thoroughly excited. You said why? Hey, they gave me this personal number and i want you to know the lord has given his personal number to us like i always say jeremiah 33 verse 3 where the lord said call upon me and i will answer god's invitation to man that's prayer call and today in this service we're going to call upon the lord and the good news is that he said if you call i will answer There's no call waiting. There's no unanswered calls. There's always an answer to the call. Prayer is not a troubleshooting mechanism, rather for communication with God. Take note of it. Prayer is not a troubleshooting mechanism, rather for communication with God. prayer is not for trouble shooting many people stop praying when they are in a crisis it's trouble shooting they think oh my gosh this is the only thing to do no no prayer was not given for that prayer was given to have a communication with god i can't forget i keep saying this over and over again many years ago my brother told me through a facebook post he said like this mala prayer is not the spare wheel prayer is the steering wheel unfortunately many people pray in a time of crisis many people ask for prayer in a time of crisis of course we ought to pray in crisis we ought to ask for prayer in crisis the bible teaches us call upon me in the day of trouble invitation from god to man call whatever your name is god is in call shehan call deepthi call arafat 
you call upon me and i will answer you radhika you call he will answer reza you call he will answer but remember prayer is not a troubleshooting mechanism it was given for communication with god prayer is not something we do out of desperation but rather out of revelation you heard me right prayer is not something we do out of desperation we do it out of revelation what do you mean revelation pastor revelation is simple like this we know to who we pray we have the revelation that god is able and he will answer it's not a sign of desperation it's out of revelation at tonight even as we begin to pray we're going to pray out of this revelation knowing that god is going to help god is going to answer prayer not only has the power to open but also the power to close doors prayer not only has the power to open doors but it also has the power to close doors james chapter 5 verse 17 to 18 my friends spells this out very clearly james 5:17 to 18 take note what it says elijah was a man with a nature like ours he prayed earnestly the bible says that it would not rain and it did not rain for three and a half years and he prayed again and the heavens gave rain so you begin to see prayer not only opens but also prayer has the power to close doors friends what a tremendous truth this is it's not only an entry it's also you can it's an exit in one sense say no entry to anybody that's why i'm saying locked down but not knocked down long as you have a revelation of prayer you are praying to god and you are praying in faith oh my goodness gracious me nobody can knock you down some of you are listening to the tone of my voice you're feeling the pressure the heat of the season it's affecting your personal life your mental life your emotions your family i want to encourage you this evening my beloved friend the lord is calling you to start praying for yourself for yourself I want to teach you three important types of prayer and ways of praying. And we're going to get our church together as we're going to pray these simple prayers. Like I said, if we begin to learn the secret of what I'm teaching, you're going to experience amazing things. In 2 Kings chapter 6 verse 27, We are introduced where a leader prays for his workers or for his worker a leader pray for the worker or it is like the pastor the shepherd praying for the believer to king 627 let me give you the background before i read the scripture the background was the worker he was fearful for he saw a picture fear gripped him he thought his future was over he did not know how to handle it so all that he remembered to do was he came running back with this fear and he reported to his leader at that time and he said leader master we are surrounded our enemies are around us 
there seems to be no way out it seems that we are in locked down we are isolated there is no help for us he began to speak out of fear because that is what he saw but the good news is this when the leader heard what the worker had to say listen to what the leader did verse 27 And Elisha prayed and said, "Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see." Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. take note what is happening the leader is praying for the worker or the shepherd is praying for the sheep who was troubled who was fearful and what did he pray lord i pray that you open the eyes and i'll tell you what tonight this is exactly what we're going to do we are going to pray for every one of you Maybe you are like Gehazi in this story. You're troubled. You're worried. Anxiety is all over you. And you're wondering what's going to happen. All that you can say is evil, bad reports. But tonight in the name of Jesus Even as Elisha prayed for Gehazi and his eyes was open what if i had to tell you even as we pray for you your eyes are going to be open and we'll invite our pastor to pray right now and as pastor begins to pray I want every one of you to take note that the Lord is going to open your spiritual eyes. I can see this happening. Your spiritual eyes are going to be open. Do me a favor. As our pastor gets ready to pray, would you begin to take your hands Place it on your eyes. Amen. Pastor, over to you. Would you begin to pray for all other people? Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I come before you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I bring before you the congregation, Lord, all our pastors, leaders, members in the congregation, Lord. I commit them into thy gracious hands, Lord. Cover and seal them with the blood of Jesus, Lord. Lord, I pray in this time of crisis, O oh Lord, that people will draw closer to you, Lord. Their faith will increase, Lord. You will bless them physically, financially, spiritually, Lord. Lord, and I pray, Father, that in this time they will spend more time with you, my God. Father, where does our help come from, Lord? It comes from you, Lord. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, they will be connected to each other, Lord. Lord. they will support each other lord they will stand with each other father lord i say thank you lord lord if there is anyone who is going to a financial crisis at this moment lord i pray that you will open heaven's gates and you will bless them oh god lord if there is anyone who is going through any challenges in the life at life in this moment oh god i pray that lord you will intervene the holy spirit will intervene lord will lord will comfort them father lord in this at this moment father i pray for every home of god for every adult for every family for every child of god lord that your guardian angels will guide them guard them and protect them in every area of their life lord lord that you will take them from strength to strength from glory to glory father father i pray in the name of jesus lord lord undertake for every member in the family o oh lord
God. Let them know, Lord, that you are their creator, God. You are their provider, Lord. You are Jehovah Rapha, their healer, God. That nothing is impossible, O oh Lord. No matter what happens in the world, O oh God, but you are with them at all times, O oh God. Father, I thank you, Lord, that we can look unto you, Father, because you're our Father, Lord. You're our Father, Abba Father. You're a wonderful God. You're a good God. You're an awesome God, Father. We thank you, Lord, that you call us your children, O oh God, and we can come to you, Lord, no matter what happens, O oh Father, that you are with us, Lord. You promise never to leave us, Lord, nor to forsake us, Lord. Lord, I thank you that you protect all of us, Lord, like the apple of your eye, Lord. You have engraved us in your palms, Lord. That is how much you love us, Lord. This e evening, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We Thank you, Lord, that we can put our trust in you and our faith in you, Lord. Those who put their trust and faith in you, Lord, will never be put to shame, Lord. I thank you, Father, for all the members in the congregation, Lord. Bless them, Father. Bless them abundantly, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Somebody say, my eyes are open. Come on. Say to somebody else. Say, my eyes are are open. I'm very grateful for my leaders who have prayed for me like this to see the bigger picture. Yes. The second type of prayer is taken from the book of Matthew chapter 9 verse 38 Matthew chapter 9 verse 38 let me give you the background of the story Jesus was traveling with his friends as he was traveling with his friends he happened to see a multitude of people As he saw the multitude, he was very quickly able to discern that these people were going nowhere in life. He recognized that these people were going astray. No direction for life, no purpose for life. He not only recognized or discerned the problem, he also began to teach his friends at that time the answer to the problem. This is what great leaders are called to do. A leadership thought, even as I teach you, it doesn't take a great leader to find a problem. It takes a great leader to identify the problem and to find a solution and to help Resolve it. That's leadership. Here in Matthew 9, verse 38, very interestingly, he discerned the problem. Then he began to share with his friends what the solution was. And listen to what verse 38 tells us in Matthew 9, 38. Then Jesus said, Therefore, pray. Somebody say pray. Therefore, pray. The Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Now, Jesus never prayed this prayer. Brother Ronald, Brother Ivan, Isaac, Johan, Saranga, Sasanka, Pastor Delany, catch this. Jesus did not pray this prayer. Jesus discerned the problem. Jesus also showed them the answer. But he told them, you know what? It is up to you to pray for it. It is up to you to pray for it. You must pray for it. Beautiful picture, isn't it? Friends, we're living in a day and age where there's such a lot of chaos, such a lot of brokenness. 
I forget the day Pastor Akila and myself were in the sanctuary last couple of days and a family came to meet us. The girl is only 18 years young and doing her A-levels going to a very prominent school but is going through a very difficult time. She's cut her hands. They showed us the video. Oh, it was so pathetic. Why? Because there's an issue in the family. The father's heart has turned away from mother. But not only that, the father's heart has turned away from the children. Not only that, the father's heart has become evil and wicked towards the wife and the children. In the season of lockdown, father keeps harassing the kids and husband keeps harassing mother. The children are like this multitude in the story. They were harassed like a sheep without shepherd. Not doing what to do, but it was in a time such as that, a very close group of friends of Bethany was able to very quickly get involved and help that family. I want to ask every one of you, Bethany, can you play an important role in helping this nation? You may ask me, how do I do it? The way you can do it is, you know the problem. You also know the answer now. Pray that God will raise up more people within the Bethany congregation itself to be actively involved in the work of the Lord in the work of the Lord the more people say yes to God it creates more hope to those who do not know the Lord did you hear me the more people Pastor David Roshante the more people say yes to God it creates a greater hope for those who do not Know the Lord. Jerem Rasaya, Revive Team, Men's Network, wake up! You can't be sleeping, Men's Network. You got to wake up. MNM, women, teens, come on. If you sleep in a time such as this, the people who are harassed will lose it all. But Jesus said to his team, look at these people. The solution is, is in people committing themselves to serve. Tonight I want to pray. We invite the family of Bethany Church to pray about this. To pray that the Lord will be to raise the Lord will begin to raise people in this church and everybody who is watching that the Lord will raise them to say, I'm going to commit myself to pray. I'm going to devote myself to help. The Lord said, you pray for this. Jesus did not pray. And tonight we're going to do the same thing. I'm not going to pray. I'm going to ask you to pray very specifically. I'm going to ask the family to pray because the Lord said to the team to pray. It was a team that the Lord said, I want you to pray for this. The Lord entrusted this. I want every one of you who is a part of team, worship team, cell team, friendship teams, MNM, Prayer team, evangelism team, media team. It's time for teams to start praying. 
You're ready to pray with a wonderful family. Amen. How about you, my brother and my sister? Would you begin to lead the church in this prayer? Here we go. Amen. Hallelujah. I come before you, my Father, my sweet Jesus, Lord God of all Christians, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, Jesus of Jerusalem, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus of Israel, sweet Jesus, we come before you, we ask to take the fear away from these people in this critical time, my Father. Lord, I pray for your providence, I pray for your grace, I pray for your mercy, I pray for your protection. I pray, my Father, that you died for us, you gave your life on the cross for us so that we can be covered with the blood of Jesus, my Father. Lord, take all our pain, our agony, our, our sicknesses, my Father, away. Deliver us from all situations, my Father. Lord, walk behind us, beside us, take control, my Father, of all Bethany family, all people in Sri Lanka, all in the world, my Father. Take this virus away, my my father lord you have the power to deliver us my father lord i ask everything my father everything in the name of jesus christ of nazareth who died for us on the cross my father in jesus holy name we pray amen 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 praise be to god almighty i wonder how many of you have said yes i am joining i want to be a part of the solution let me introduce the third prayer. The third prayer is found in Acts chapter 12 and verse 7. Let me give you the background once again. Acts chapter 12 verse 7. The leader of the people at that time, his name was Peter. Now Peter, Nana, Kara, Priyangani, Pastor Peter, I want to say that we love all of you. Vishay. Brother Peter and Sister Priyangani, I want you to know that I pray for your family very specially. I want to tell it to your daughter and your son-in-law, Virukshan. I pray for them, okay? I pray for them. The Lord will strengthen them, and I know He has. Acts chapter 12, verse 7, the context is the leader at that time, Peter, has been arrested by the officers the government it has been taken into prison for being a good steward for preaching for living for Jesus he's been arrested and taken into custody in a time such as that something interesting begins to happen what happens is look what happens in verse 5 Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. The third thing I want to teach tonight is about prayer. Where the sheep pray for their shepherd or where the workers are praying for their leader. And I'm standing here tonight and on behalf of all the pastors of the nations in this nation, I'm standing on behalf of all of them. There's such a great demand upon pastors and leaders where people always want to call them, text them, and say, Pastor, pray for me. I have this problem. I have a financial need. My family is going through a crisis. And yes, that is one of the reasons why the Lord has placed pastors and leaders. But in this story, you begin to see that the pastor, the leader, was also in a difficult place. I want every one of you who are listening to the tone of my voice to take note. The pastors are also like you. They go through hard times. Somebody's husband, somebody's father, somebody's son, and somebody's brother or sister. They go through difficult times. And sadly, more often than not, the pastors would not open their mouth and say, Pray for us. I'm reminded, Pastor Akila, of Jesus himself. Jesus was facing the greatest challenge 
in his ministry while he was on earth, the greatest challenge, where he was about to face the cross and to be separated from the Father. At that time, it seems that the shepherd, the leader, turned to his congregation and said, Hey boys, would you pray for me? Team, would you pray for me? And so sad, isn't it? The shepherd comes to see the sheep. The leader comes to see the workers. The guys that are praying. But I'm here tonight standing and saying, it's time for you, every one of you, to start praying for your leaders as well. I'm standing here and I'm appealing on behalf of all the pastors of the nations. It's time to pray. See, Peter was in lockdown. Peter was in a tight place. It seemed that there was no way out for Peter. But the good news is, Peter had a flock who prayed for him. I want to challenge every one of you, please. Would you spare every day a few minutes to lift up your pastors to the Lord, their families to the Lord. The pastors, they're always finding out about you. They're trying to be nice to you. I know that I fast. I know that I give. I know that I sacrifice. But we don't ask. I, I, I personally don't ask. But I'm telling you today, Peter was out of the prison because of the prayers of the people. And I'm encouraging you, pray for your pastors. Pray for your leaders. You must do that, beloved friends. You must do that. Tonight, I want to give an opportunity to one of our members in the church to pray for the pastors. Now, want every one of you, as he prays, would you join together with him and say, yes, Lord, touch our pastors. Be with our pastors. Strengthen our pastors. Can we do that tonight? The Lord will be glorified and every one of us will be blessed. Amen. Over to you, my brother. Come on, pray for us tonight. Let us pray for our pastors today. We thank you, Lord, for all our pastors, Father. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings upon them. We thank you, Lord, that you have chosen them, Lord, as a chosen race and a royal priesthood, Father. We thank you, Lord, for that you have called them and you have selected them, Father. We also thank you, Lord, that they have, Lord, followed you and they have left everything behind and followed you, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you will bless them. We pray, Lord, for your hedge of protection around them, Father, around them and each and every one of their families, Father. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for what you have done for them thus far, Lord. We also this time pray, Lord, that this time of challenge, that a special outpouring of your spirit will be upon them, Father. You have said, Lord, that you will, on that rock, you will build your church, Father. And we pray, Lord, that they will be the rock, and on them you will build your church, Father. We pray, Lord, that you will be with them, you will bless them, you will guide them no matter where they go, Father. And especially in these times of challenges, Father, we pray for your goodness and your grace upon each and every one of them, Father. We once again, Lord, praise you, Lord, that they have followed you, and we know, Lord, that you are God, Lord, who has promised that those who follow you, you will never put to shame, Father. All this we ask in your mighty name. Amen. All right, friends, I want to say thank you for praying. What a fantastic moment it was. Fantastic moment. I believe there are many of you who would say, you know what? 
Pastor Day, we're going to come in to pray. We're going to come in to do what we can. And I want to say thank you for all of you who watch, share this video. Pray for the pastors across the globe. Tonight, I want to encourage all of you. Like we heard last week, Holy Communion and tithing. I pray that you will take Holy Communion every week at your homes. And also, I want to encourage you to give your tithe and your offering. You begin to see the numbers on the screen for wherever you are watching. I'm telling you that this is a good ministry to invest into. And I mean it. It's a great ministry to invest. And I want to encourage you, would you choose to invest? In advance, let me say thank you to every one of you who has and who is and who will support this ministry. Your support helps us to fulfill the mandate of the Lord. And also stay connected through social media and etc. And if you need anything, please don't hesitate to call. Please don't hesitate to call. Like I told you, what a finish on a high. You see a high? Yes, I see a high. You know why? Because I have a group of Sunday school kids who are very excitedly awaiting to say some brilliant stuff to all the dads out there. Okay, kiddos, over to you. Say what is in your heart. Pastor D is signing off. Keep watching the kids. God bless all of you. Bye-bye. Father, I thank you for my father and all the other fathers around the world for how for everything they have done for us, how they provided for us, and how they take care of us. I commit their lives to you, Father Lord. And uh, I declare a mighty blessing over them, Father Lord, and that they, I pray, I thank, I pray that they will live a long life, Father Lord, in Jesus' name, Amen. Father, God bless you. I love you, Daddy. Happy Father's Day, Tati. We hope all your wishes come true, and we love you so, so, so much. I love you, bestest friend. Hi, Tati. Thank you for swimming in the pool and bringing me fish in, in, in and making the bunker. You're the best father in the whole entire world, Tati. Bye, Tati. I love you. Happy Father's Day, Dada. You're the best. I love you so much. Thank you, Dada, for your love, care, and protection. Thank you for always being in a good mood, not always bad mood. Thank you, thank God for your life, Dada. Happy Father's Day. I thank you, God, for this handsome father you gave me. And he loves me so much that he takes care of me and hugs me. And, um, um, because if I have dreams, he hates me having dreams. In the middle of the night, he comes and hugs me. And he, he, what, he loves me so much. And um, happy Father's Day, Daddy. Love you. I love you. Father's Day. My dad is 
Joanu takes me to school and swimming every day. Thank you, Dad. My dad does everything for me. My dad takes care of me. My dad loves me and I love my dad also. Bye. My dad is a really fun guy. I love him very much. My dad is the funniest guy ever. I love him very much. Happy Father's Day. I love you so much, Dad. Happy Father's Day. I love, I love you, Dad. And Papa. The greatest gift I ever had came from God. I called him Dad. Dad, I want to wish you a very happy Father's Day. I love you so much. Daddy is the best daddy in the world. He loves me. He surprises me and I love him a lot. Happy Father's Day, Tati. We love you.